Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journey channel. Today I'm inspired, as always, by the amazing um, Lisa Oxley. And this is the beginning of my 100 day project. Um, and I um, was inspired by, well I'm always inspired by Lisa. Her artwork is absolutely amazing. If you don't follow her on Instagram, I do suggest you go and follow her because her work is always phenomenal. Um, but um, during a recent cyber crop, um, Lisa did a page, and this page is inspired by that. And using the techniques that she uses quite regularly in her artwork. So um, I'm gessoing my page, which I don't usually do, um, but it does help uh, the paint move around the page a lot more when you do gesso. Um, Dina Wakeley always talks about gesso being the page's underwear. Um, so it helps you get ready for everything. So it's um, a good thing to have on, particularly if you want to move paint around a little bit. So I'm just tearing up some rice paper sheets. Um, I was pretty happy to be using these ones because these are um, some rice paper sheets that I've actually designed for Scrap FX, and I'll leave the links to um, those in the description box below. Um, with Lisa's artwork, she tends to um, have some collage on her page and then paint around it so that's what I'm sort of following along with. Another thing that Lisa's really um, famous for is her beautiful use of colour and she uses lots of rainbows of colours. So um, I do too but I use it in a different <laughs> different way so um, I tend to just plaster all the paint on at um, you know at once where she's very deliberate and where she puts it which I really love about it because it, she always keeps white space I think that's some the main thing that inspires me about the beautiful work she does because it always looks crisp and clear and there's always white space on it which as you know if you followed this channel for a long time is something I aspire to be when I grow up uh, to do when I grow up so I'm just layering up the paints um, and doing it in threes around the page. Um, when I do mic making or things like this or applying paint, I do tend to apply in, in three place, places around the page. It just helps your eye with that visual triangle as you go along. The um, Using the stencils and rubbing off the extra paint is um, a technique called ghosting and um, to do it effectively, you need really need to um, heat set the layers underneath. So I'm using acrylic paint. Once you heat set the layers, they are trans they're not translucent at all. They're permanent. So um, once your layer underneath is permanent, you can paint over with wet paint on top, over where you've already painted. You can see me overlapping over the turquoise there, and rub off with your um, wet wipe and you can see those colors coming up through so it's a great great way of um, layering up your paints and getting some really cool effects the other thing that um, Lisa does a lot is to use the same stencils or to use repeat the sort of same stencils on her page so you've got that um, repetition happening all over your page um, and repetition in artwork is really really important um, because it our, our eyes want to find um, pattern that that's what we do as humans we, we look for patterns so by um, giving some really clear patterns as we go along is really helpful now I was really proud to put that collage paper down on my page because I designed it but I kept painting over it so um, I got a wet wipe and was actually wiping away some of the excess paint it, <sighs> It's there for texture in the background. Um, you can see in the real life page, you can actually sort of see it peeping through, um, but I'm not very restrained. I just sort of kept adding color and kept adding color and then start looking at it and going, oh, I'm actually covering up the bits I wanted to keep. So just be aware and, you know, think about where you're putting things. Um, this is another uh, technique that Lisa does a lot and it's one that I found really is helpful um, when I've been working with white space because 
as you saw, I was getting a little bit carried away and I was continuing to paint and continuing to paint. So there's nothing wrong with you actually painting back in some white space. So that's what I'm doing here. I'm painting in some white space where I wanted to have it again. I didn't want those two pieces on the left hand side joining up as much as they did before. So by putting that stripe of white in between, um, that helped to um, break them apart again. And plus you can go in and put in some extra stamping and um, you know stenciling over the top just to break it off. So you can be as particular with this as you want or you can be as loose as you want with it. It's um, just lots and lots of fun to do. To add some con vis visual contrast to the page I'm going in with um, some black stamping just using a script stamp and stamping over just really randomly over the edge and um, over where I've painted and over um, some of the white space as well. Uh, this is one of the bits that Lisa does so well and it always scares me when I do it on my page because I'm so afraid that I've just made a mess by actually painting black on the page. But black is really, really important. You can see just by putting that black on the page, it just adds so much drama to it. So the secret to this is um, using the black paint, having a clean wet wipe and wiping it off straight away. I found when I'm doing this that um, using the Dina Wakely black gesso is actually really, really good because it's um, got a matte finish. It dries quite quickly, so it dries to a consistency that you can wipe it away quite easily, um, fairly quickly. You do have to work quickly though, because if you um, leave it too long, because of the matte finish on it, it actually does dry really quickly. So um, just be warned. So once I've put in some scribbly lines and played around with it, because there was so much white on the page, <laughs> I wanted to you know fill in the gaps somewhat so I'm just using some of the Dina Wakely gloss sprays um, in turquoise and magenta I've got some white there too and I've also got a little bit of black because I wanted some black speckles as well over the page I, oh and some lemon because why not use all the colors? So you can sort of see those speckles in the background start to make it look really interesting. And again, they layer over the top of all the other layers that you've got um, and just help to sort of tie everything together and to give everything a really good flow. If you didn't have um, inks to do this, you could certainly get your paint markers out and do some mark making, even if it's just simple dots over the top to give you that similar effect. Um, to get so those random splatters I find using a fan brush uh, is really really handy to do that I get big blots and little blots um, you also saw me just use the stems out of the gloss spray itself and you actually get some really good splatters if you do that so while I was doing this um, I knew I wanted to put these figures on the page these are the figures hand drawn by Michelle Logan, who's a very, very talented, another very talented Australian artist. Um, and they're available through ScrapFX. So I will leave the link below um, in the description box to where you can get these um, cool, um, they're called Scribble Peeps um, rice paper images. And they come, <clears throat> you can either get them in rice paper and black and white, or you can get the coloured versions. And I really didn't know how I wanted to use them. Because the background was so colourful, I was leaning towards using the black and white, but then the colourful image there had a lot of the colours that I had in the background. So it was just lots of playing around with placement to see what I liked, what I didn't quite like that because the um, black and white ones at the back sort of gave it a bit of a focus um, and let the other one pop out from the background. In the end, I decided that I wasn't going to use that coloured one and I'd go back to using the um, black and white one. So lots and lots of play, playing around. And again, that's not something usually I do. When I'm collaging, I tend to be a little bit more um, decisive. So it was actually quite unusual that I sort of play around for that long when I'm doing it. Now, I don't know if 
any of you eagle-eyed people when I was gluing that down noticed that I had a little bit of black smear underneath it. I did do some scribbling in the background with the Stabilo oil pencil and a Stabilo oil pencil is actually a water um, reactive pencil so if you get it wet it's going to spread. So when I was adding the um, gel medium to glue down those rice papers it um, activated the, the pencil. It wasn't a big deal particularly because these um, images sort of have a grey tone on it but just be really aware that if you are planning to put collage onto your page um, leave any water reactive media like the Stabilo oil pencil or dye inks or something like that to your very last layer especially if you're going to glue over it unless you're going to use a dry adhesive like um, double sided tape or something but obviously the gel medium works a lot better with these collage rice papers. One of the final things I'm doing on the figures again is inspired by um, Michelle Logan um, and a lot of her stamped, when she stamps out an image, for example, from say a Dina Wakeley stamp, she goes back in afterwards and does the most beautiful line work on it and makes someone else's image, stamped image, become completely different, become her own with her own line work on it. Um, and it's something that really inspires me every time I see Michelle's work. So. I want to do the same and go back and just add a little bit of line work onto those and I used um, a white pen so it could pop it out from the background. On the left hand side I'm writing in a quote and I managed to muck it up and this is the reason why I love using acrylic paint because once the acrylic paint is dried as I said before it is permanent so the paint pens are an acrylic paint. When they are still wet you can wipe them away with a wet wipe and you, you can completely get rid of it so you don't see it anymore um, and it's really really handy especially if you make a spelling mistake or you write down the wrong word which is what I did just then. So the quote I chose to put on this page is don't measure yourself using someone else's ruler and for me that was really really important um, quote to have particularly for the first day of doing the 100 day project. I as I said at the very beginning it I'm completely, completely inspired by Lisa Oxley. She is amazing. Her hyperlapse videos that she does of um, her techniques just, you know, they just get me going. But I get really, really frustrated because when I try to do it myself, I really stumble and I can't get it to look like her. So I'm measuring my success using her ruler. And it really comes back to just taking the pressure off yourself and... Um, do it for you and practice and practice doesn't make perfect it makes progress uh, something I tell the kids in class a lot practice makes progress so that's why I do the 100 day project so I can continue to make pro progress with my artwork so I hope you stay with me for my 100 day project um, throughout I'm going to put lots of videos up to, um, to share with you of the project and um, so you can follow along with what we're doing thank you so much for watching until next time bye for now